हेलो हाय एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल लिटल अंडर रेटेड होप यू आर ऑल डूइंग वेल टुडे वी आर गोना चेक आउट अ वीडियो ऑफ अक्षत टाइटल्ड एज बेनिफिट्स ऑफ टेकिंग अ लोन हाउ टू टेक लोन्स टू मेक मनी सो प्रोबेबली इन आवर चाइल्डहुड एंड ऑल आवर लाइफ वी हैव बीन टॉट दैट लोन इज रियली बैड एंड वी शुड नॉट गेट अंडर डेथ डेट डेट इज रियली बैड एंड इट इज़ अ ट्रैप वंस यू गेट इन इन टू इट यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू गेट आउट ऑफ इट till the time you die or your generation will be indebted uh, to the people whom you have taken loan from but uh, there there is some other side of taking loan as well which probably akshat is going to touch on in this video and uh, he is going to touch upon how we can actually make money using loans and how prominent businesses which we see and uh, use products of or services of have taken a lot of loans and by uh there is a need for the loans to be taken though it is not necessarily or generalized in every single case it uh differs case to case and individual to individual or business to business uh so let's come to the video for more insights hi everyone welcome to today's video so i recently took a loan of 1 crore rupee in order to buy a villa in goa On this video I am going to help you understand the math behind why I have taken that loan what benefits am I going to derive out of taking that loan more specifically I will tell you how am I going to forex my investment almost in the next 10 years using this loan I will show you the math behind it in the second half of the video I will help you understand how you can benefit by taking loans yourself please understand that this is a dangerous game please watch this video entirely only then you will be able to understand the concept this is not an entertainment video you are putting your hard earned money on the line so please understand the concept behind it and i will speak from very practical experiences if you like the content please press the like button it would allow these type of videos to reach out to more people in fact do press the like button and we will get started also this video has been brought to you by upgrad more about them subsequently on the video so let me take you to my whiteboard and start explaining the context so i have recently purchased a villa in goa now what do i own let me give you a very quick understanding so i own a villa it's a constructed villa i own the land and it has a running business on it what is the running business it's airbnb and the property is already listed on airbnb and it is already generating rental income so this is the nature of the investment that i have made now how have i been able to finance this so i have taken a loan of 1 crore rupee i have invested right off the bat 90 lakhs as down payment now for this 1 crore rupee i am paying an emi of 80000 rupees monthly and how much money am i making through this airbnb rental business i am making roughly 81000 rupee so net net what is my outflow on every month basis it is close to zero because i am making 81000 rupees and i am paying an emi of approximately 80 81000 rupees so it gets nullified and my investment amount comes out to be 90 lakh rupees so i hope all of us are aligned up until this point now you will have a set of natural questions that he asks how are you making 81000 rupees are you not investing your time running airbnb business? Business, that itself is a full time headache so okay let me give a very quick context there so there is an airbnb manager whom i have hired he will be paying me 81000 rupees so i am in a way sub renting it now you will naturally say that hey how are you making like 81000 rupees so i will show you all the documents when i give you a property tour but for the time being let us assume that i am able to make 81000 rupees so now let us move to 2032 and let us assume that i get a horrible return on this property so what is the absolute worst case return that i will get absolute worst case can be zero but let us talk about a slightly more realistic number let's assume a 2x growth in the next 10 years this is almost equal to a fixed deposit return then at what price will i be able to sell this i will be able to sell it at roughly 4 cr now here is the magical thing that my investment amount was 90 lakh now i am able to flip this property at 4 cr rupee so what is the amount of return that i am making i am almost 4xing my gain in the next 10 years by investing in a slightly more safer instrument for example a well protected land on which a running business is already there it is relatively safe it is not as if that someone will do kabza on it so by investing in a sensible instrument i have been able to forex my money assuming a really bad rate of return you might have a natural question for me that hey why did you not outright buy this why did you decide to take a loan on the property 
multiple reasons number one when you take a bank loan while purchasing a property the bank itself does the verification of your property so you are safe you are not getting into some disputed property this is reason one number two the interest rate environment right now is favorable for taking a loan so right now i'm getting this interest rate at roughly seven and a half eight percent in the future it might go up to ten percent also so i'm taking a fixed loan on it not a floating loan number three i will be able to claim tax benefit on the interest number four i will be able to show little bit of it as a business expense so there are a lot of things at play therefore i have taken a loan i have not outright purchased it fifth and final very important point is that i can keep on playing this game for example if i can identify 10 such more properties then i need to have the capability to make this down payment right so therefore i have not paid the entire thing outright but i have taken a loan with this equation out of the way let me now systematically help you understand under what circumstances you should also take loan and how you should go about playing this game so first and foremost when you are taking a loan you must have a very clear understanding whether you are taking that loan in order to purchase an asset or you are taking that loan for purchasing liabilities now the definition of asset and liabilities itself differs from person to person for example if you call up a ca and check with him or her that hey is car an asset or a liability the ca might say that hey it is an asset but according to finance people like me a car is a liability in fact it is a very big liability many of you might be taking emis on purchasing iphones or iphone 14 has come i'm going to buy it on the first day and take an emi on my head or this credit card is giving me like 50 rupee cashback so i'll go and spend like 50 000 rupees on taking like some kind of loan so please understand that you should generally avoid taking loans for liabilities so let me just put some context if you're a regular viewer of my channel you would already understand the difference between asset and liability but a very quick explanation there so assets are things that put money into your pocket for example the villa that i'm purchasing how is it putting money into my pocket i will be getting a cash flow in terms of airbnb rentals i will pick that cash flow and i will service my loan so that becomes an asset purchase for me on the flip side if you are purchasing iphone 14 then what is happening whether you are getting a zero cost emi whether you are getting one percent emi or whatever emi you are getting you are still purchasing a liability why because this takes money out of your pocket every single month that emi is something that you pay month on month so then comes second point that what type of asset you should purchase and the natural response here is purchase good assets so what is the definition of good assets good assets are assets whose value is likely to continue going up in time that is how i would define good assets a classic case in point would be the land versus flat debate for example land is finite amount if you are purchasing land most likely scenario is that it will go up in value but on the flip side there is a very high probability that the value of a flat will go down with time why is that the case let me quickly quickly explain explain it now here is the supply and demand curve of flats now who do you think controls the supply of flat who decides that 100 more units of flat should be added it is the builder if they have financing if they have already procured a land they can easily create 100 more units so understand this from an example that it's 2022 you purchase a flat worth 2 crore rupee now there is some kind of recession all the construction has been stopped you will be very happy that hey the supply of flats is not going up you will be able to sell your stuff okay when you go out to sell your flat what will happen that there will not be much demand because there is recession underway or there is some kind of economic issue okay then assume an optimistic scenario that okay recession is out everything is out now the economy is getting back on track then what would happen builders would start constructing a lot of flat so they will be able to move this supply so no matter how you look at it when you purchase a flat you are getting a bad deal i'm not saying that you cannot sell a flat for profit of course you can sell it if there is boom in that particular region etc etc but it's harder to sell a flat profitably compared to a land so systematically speaking which is a better asset a land is a much better asset now another way of judging a good asset is to compute the roi of that asset or return on investment so let us pick a couple of examples so the first example is of upscaling for example let's say that you're spending 20 lakh rupees in order to complete your mba your pre mba salary is 5 lakh rupee and after your mba you get a package of 10 lakh rupees then should you be taking a loan to do this MBA? The answer is yes, you should definitely do it. Why? Because the ROI computation tells you that this asset is good. Similarly, please check some of the best courses that I've curated from Upgrad. It is there in the description box. According to me, if you do these type of good courses from Upgrad, there is a very high likelihood that the ROI of your investment is going to be positive. Now comes second good asset. For example, if you are taking a loan to create a business and if you take a 10 lakh rupee loan and after taking a loan, you are able to make a profit of 3 lakh rupee a year should you take that loan the answer most likely again would be a yes it depends on a lot of things but yes if you have the confidence that you will be able to turn your business positive and that loan helps you then you should definitely do it 
now can i give you some kind of a general rule as to how to do this assessment that okay 10 lakh loan 3 lakh profit is it good or bad or 20 lakh investment 5 lakh rupees salary jump is that good or bad so for this you need to calculate the payback period so payback period means that you are taking 20 lakh loan and your salary jump is 5 lakh rupees so what becomes your payback period in a way it becomes four years what is the payback period here 10 lakh divided by 3 it becomes 3.33 so generally it is seen that if the payback period is less than 4 to 5 years then it is considered to be a good asset now this is not the only definition of a good asset you have to consider your own personal circumstances let me give you an example so for example let's say that i'm 34 years old now i'm trying to make this decision that hey if i invest 20 lakhs in my mba and i'll get a salary jump of 5 lakhs should i do it should i not do it Okay, from a finance point of view, it might make sense to do it. But from a personal circumstance point of view that I have a young son to take care of, I have a family to take care of, I already might be in a good job. So I have to do what? I have to do a risk assessment of my decision. So I hope you get this picture. Now let me explain you the third key point about taking loans. So this third key point is called as over leveraging because you will get super enticed by looking at the thumbnail of the video that hey, Akshat is able to turn his money into Forex, into a sensible asset. Let me also try to do it. Okay, please understand this point of being over leveraged. What is the meaning of over leveraged? Adani companies. No, I'm just kidding. Let me give you a proper example. So the general rule is that if the EMI that you have to pay every month, calculate the EMI of all the loans that you have taken. And if that number comes out to be more than 30% of your salary, then in general, it would be said that you are over leveraged. So let's say that you have 1 lakh rupee cash flow which is coming in form of salary. You are paying 30k EMI by purchasing iPhone, by purchasing a house, etc, etc. Then are you in a good situation? The answer is yes, that this situation is fine. But you have a salary of 1 lakh and you are paying an EMI of 90,000. Is that a sensible decision? The answer is absolutely not. Now why is that the case? Simply because of the viewpoint that if you are dependent on one or maybe even two, three sources of income and if something happens to you for example you might have some kind of a health crisis your business might not do well or you might get fired from the job then what would happen is that you might struggle to pay that emi for two three months and then that becomes a big headache for you a related point here is that i get so many questions that hey should i be taking a loan in order to invest in the stock market the answer is no you should not be doing it this brings us to the fourth and final concept of volatility so here is a very quick explanation of volatility and volatility means certainty of cash flow that is what it means for example here are three assets for example is stock an asset yes because if you invest the chances are that it will go up generally that is what has been seen what about house rent that you purchase a flat and you rent it out to someone the chances are that you are going to make money what about gold is it certain that you will make return from gold yes it is almost certain that you will make returns from gold but the cycle of return is very very long it might happen that you purchase gold in 2022 and till 2028 you get zero return out of it or negative returns then in 2030 you suddenly get like 10 percent return on it so gold generally has a fairly long cycle when it comes to stock the cycle is usually around two to three years when it comes to gold the cycle is around 10 years with house rent the cycle may be a few months depending on your ability to rent out your house for example you might be able to rent out your house for 12 months then the person will vacate the house then it might take you another six months to find a new tenant and rent them out so the cycle becomes what the cycle becomes six months so i hope you get the perspective that as the asset becomes more and more volatile you should be considerate in terms of taking loans for it for example the cycle for stock is fairly long the cycle for gold is fairly long so please do not take loans and invest in it it is completely okay to take a loan for a house it is completely okay to take a loan for a mba it is completely okay to take a business loan it is completely okay to take a loan to start your digital business etc etc i hope you get all these finer points it all comes from practical experiences and let me now very quickly give you a recap of the entire video so here are three most important points that you should remember from this video number one taking a loan is not evil it is completely okay to take loans as long as you are purchasing a loan to take an asset this is point number two that you should purchase good assets you should not purchase too many liabilities what are good assets those are growth oriented assets which fit with your personal situation and meet your risk appetite Tight. third and final point that please do not be over leveraged just because you like the debt game does not mean that you become over leveraged and ruin your financial well-being 
i hope you enjoyed this video do check out some of the courses on upgrad and i will see you soon so the video was uh, quite insightful though it was short i was expecting some more details as well but uh, most of the things he has touched a little upon so he talked about he has already summarized the video so we do not have much to discuss about in in the last 30 seconds he probably summarized and uh, presented it in three small formats or points all the discussion right so majorly he talked about what are loans what are the benefits of the loans and how he has taken the loan over buying a villa i think particularly in goa Uh, just to give you an instance how the things are working for him or how he is making the use of the loans in terms of business he is driving the cash flows from or currently focusing on and uh, what is the difference between a good asset and bad asset and lastly the over leverage system uh, there has to be some limit or some saturation point till which we have to keep some uh, i would say upper bound or upper limit uh, so that we are not over leveraged for example he mentioned about 30% emi rule if more than 30% of your salary is actively going into paying emis so all of emis combined not to a particular loan then uh, probably you are over over leveraged then there is a concern you need to revisit your loan book and uh, pro- probably you might need to think about on your finances and uh, the way your uh, salary is getting distributed so there those are the things he talked about and those are really helpful to be known we are going to check out some other videos as well till then please subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in next video till then take care bye bye